Alrighty. Going down to the junkyard once again. The LTD was a worthy sacrifice for the Q code. Mustang, 66. Of course, a little too far gone, sadly. That's not savable. something in the air today. Yeah, it's kicking my butt. You're going to be okay. I better be. Past that FW, no, there it is. I see the boom. Yeah, that's right. There. That guy still hasn't said nothing back about it. I'm not going to make the attempt. No, it's just curious, but uh, those are hard trucks to find, and parts are kind of hard to find as well, just like internationals. It's a neat rig. I know, it's quite awesome, too. I don't know if I can see it. Do good? No, I'm going to have some blocking it out. door fair lane over there unless it's just me no other safe spot to put this camera so I'll be positioning it wherever
Alrighty, I'll meet you guys on down there. As long as I don't catch on every weed known to man. Gosh, that's such an easy fix. Alright, I'm gonna put this down a little. So I can lift this up high and out of the weeds. Now I gotta watch out for rattlers. <laughs> Don't mind the camera work. So I'm multitasking, watching for western backs, it's little tiny sand rattlers, and not the trip. All trying to keep this decently even for a good shot. Sure's what a deer and rabbit droppings back here. Whoa. Oh, there goes a the small. Okay, it's over there. I saw my first little sand rattler, but it was over to the left. I think he got ran over. It wasn't moving very healthily. Oh no, my my rocker pants. Oh no, what am I gonna do? So there you have it. The Roadrunner is loaded. There is some work to do underneath, but that's fine. Got some money back on the project. Oh, oh my gosh. Look, uh, look at that. Uh, dropped a penny. Where did this go? That's the ash tree. Oh, it's so discolored.
because I think this was a improperly marked car, but I'll do more research on it. So now, gotta find a decent uh, Plymouth satellite and use that it. Light. That light should be easy. Yeah, because they're kind of a low tier. show real fast because this is a 20 something foot long trailer barely anything right there and then gone to right there man that's this is a long car but hey it's a road runner and we can fix it this ain't nothing honesty yeah, a lot of people By the way, anyone wants to know what a Roadrunner key looks like, well at least this one. And there we go. It's nice and blue. And it's by uh, Cole, Cleveland, Ohio, wherever it was cut, and it's a Y152. Of course, I'll be getting a different key, and I'll save this one back because you really don't see originals like this floating around anymore. So, <laughs> so Looked up the VIN number to find out what this actually is. And the information right here. And sure enough, I was actually lied to by that old guy. I, uh, whenever I see that old guy again, I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. Or you know, a sucker born every day. Once again, right here. So this is the Satellite Sabring. Well, you know, which is a medium price car. Of course, you know, satellite, they parts cross, you know, between that and the Roadrunner because they're pretty much the same body style, except just different decal and makeup. And this is a G code, which means it is a 318 car. I don't care, I'm actually a huge fan of 318s. I kind of figured that it wasn't a, you know, a big block or a 440 or a 400 like the guy said and everything. Um, I'm just not gonna trust people like that ever again. I'm gonna look up, uh, you know, the VIN number, so that way, you know, I know what it actually is. Surprisingly enough, this is an actual local car. Uh, I truly do believe that this was a victim of drunk driving and stupidity, but they did have a big block 440 in it. Well, it's not a big. It's the small block 440 that they had. I don't know why I lost well, big block on the brand and so on. Hate about it, but anyways. This, uh, this, like I said, this did have the 440 in it, but uh, drunk driving was part of the entire scenario, and it was too much power for the person who was driving it, so that's why it got caved on, on the other side. <sighs> Such a shame that people would uh, have to drink and drive, that's how you lose a lot of good cars. But this one's not too far gone. Now, if it was completely crushed or split in two, then I probably would not be having, now, 
probably would never bought the car, but since it's savable, yeah. Which here shortly, uh, be either today or sometime, I will be uh, jacking up the back of this to look underneath from the from the rear of the car to see how everything looks on the unibody. But of course, uh, let's see here. This is a sedan coupe model, and it did have a white interior, which I actually am happy about because I'm not a fan of black interiors because. Uh, even during the winter when the sun beats down on the inside of the interior, it kind of hurts to sit on. And plus too, when it gets dirty, things kind of, you know, stand out, kind of like a grayish. Of course, white does that too, but I prefer white over, over black. So, I have options available to me. It's not going to be a racer or a drag car or a fun car or anything. Um, since this is a 318, I am probably going to put like a 318 Magnum or I might actually modernize it with a uh, Hemi Magnum out of something kind of a, like a new charger or a, or a pickup or something like that since this is Mopar. I know some people you know may not like that idea but to me you know there's a lot of thing that a lot of things that needs to be redone on the car so I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not too fussed on what actually truly happens on with the engine compartment because uh, there's a lot of stuff I do need to fix and switch around. So uh, I know it's going to stay an automatic on the tree and get rid of that uh, shifter on the floor, fix the holes there and everything. So uh, and there's an eyelash in my eye. So, yeah, kind of figured that it was not a 440 or a 400 or some sort of a big block, but, you know, to be honest, I, I truly don't care. I truly do not care. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Warner Brothers and the Looney Tunes, so I always had to get a Roadrunner, no matter what year. But uh, for some reason, I'm not much of a fan of the 71 and 72s because of just how the, the nose looks, the grill. So, that's how light she is. I can just stand here. And... But they really, really stripped her, which I'll uh, grab the camera here real fast to show. Since uh, some of the stalks uh, in the corn was blowing out, and thankfully there was no snakes. Now, before I jack up the car and look underneath, um, I think that was also an identification number right there. Not quite sure. Of course, I still have to learn some stuff on these Plymouths because this is my first one and I know nothing about it. <laughs> but this did have air shocks. That's right. There they are. I'm not a fan of air shocks by any means. And this car may not be original. There's, yeah. It's, this car has been through hell and back because, you know, someone rolled it. That is all. Yeah. And I found out those beer bottles are not from uh, from the guys pouring it out. That was from the original driver. So, this is a very, very beautiful blue color. I like knowing what it is. My fin number did not quite exactly say. So, but yeah. So all in all, when I was actually looking, um, when I was actually talking about the hump there, that's actually that's actually normal. So yeah, as you can see right there, they bolted it down. So yeah, and of course the Roadrunner emblem's gone. But. As you can see, when I take the top off, I'll have to take that off by the by the welds and refix that and then put a new roof on. I'll have to get some kind of a bar system or make something so that way I could put the, something in the middle right here and then jack it up instead of jacking it up, you know, by using the floor and then jacking it up that way. Because uh, it's going to take a lot of stuff to... Uh, fix this roof because uh, it's bent on this side because uh, let's see here I think you can faintly see it 
Yeah, see. It's kind of bent over because of the because of the crush right there. So this is the reason why that it was parted out. Someone else had a Roadrunner, another 318, and they just gutted this one. But it's fine. I can actually get a lot of stuff for this car. So, of course, I took off that door hinge. What my brother did, it was barely on. I got some stuff right here to fix. So... That I'm surprised that this front end is still here because it's got those racing bars, whatever it is. Yeah, I'll definitely have to do some modification if I want to put a modernized Hemi in this, especially with the with the firewall. But also too, I could always just put a 318 in this and modernize it. Because, I mean, she'll be original up to a certain point, but it's loose and everything under there. I'll have to get a bracket and kind of not mess with that too much because I don't want to uh, the warp the metal. Of course, I mean, extra work would be no big deal, but that was caused by the loader. Because I knew something was going to happen because that's a, that's a very weak spot. I'll just restructure some things. i got to, of course, pound that down, fix some holes. Because whoever was joyriding this, they drilled the holes right there for the bucket seats. Which I am not a fan of because uh, I saw the kind of seats that are in this and also the satellites. They're actually quite, quite nice looking, not going to lie. So, <coughs> allergies bothering me again. Of course, I didn't quite notice this. That's what's left of the wet interior. Yeah. All in all, this is an extremely easy fix. It it really, truly is. And people are scared to actually mess with these kind of cars. I mean, let me get at a decent spot here. Yeah, see, I don't know if I could, yeah, I got some damage to repair. It's kind of strange how that back window is actually straight, but everything else is just kind of bubbled around, but I do truly need to find another Roadrunner or a uh, satellite kind of actually want to find a satellite so that way I could uh, salvage it instead of another Roadrunner because uh, getting another Roadrunner, you know, that's like, a, you know, like a crime. Unless it was actually like smashed in the back or, or wrecked in the front and it wasn't uh, fixable, and I'd, yeah, then I'd actually take it and, you know, repair this with no problems. But, uh, but yeah... Of course, people will be like, oh, you can't fix that, you can't fix that. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Watch me. So. Yeah. That tape's still on there. Ooh. But yeah. Well, as I was looking up stuff for the VIN number, it kind of threw me off. It's like, okay, does it have it listed as a Roadrunner? It's like, no, this is the satellite model so it's like okay but sports coupe for some reason I always keep ending up with sports coupes which I'm fine with but go in on this side yeah again I don't know what kind of color of blue this is I uh, have to look up more of the numbers because all the VIN numbers are gone and taken from this car except for the door because it's one of those sticker bins. Alrighty. And get the key on this side. Uh oh. I wonder if it's like
I got the key out of this. That's the thing. No, it's just the wrong way. Oh, there we go. How about that? It still works. But I know I need a new uh, steering shaft. I could. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Wow, that that screwed up. So I wonder if they hit something when they when they when they rolled this. Because that steering box, there's a huge gap in it. Here, I'm gonna put the camera forward and point it in, and I'll review it on the on the video to see if it's either the linkage or the, or the gearbox that's doing that. Because look at that huge jump. Just a second. Kinda position that just right so you guys are gonna get zoomed in here making sure that's on the yeah, cause I can see where it's at but on the video review yeah, that's let me see if I actually can see it from right here to be honest Oh, wow, that's bad. Let me see if I can hold it up that way. Yeah, it's still on the same. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, holding it up. It still, it still, it still does it. I could, I could feel. That there's not much there. Wow. So I'm gonna need a brand new steering box, uh, the shaft and everything to the steering column. Might be okay. That could be refurbished. But uh, zoom out, zoom back to the standard. But wow, that thing is thrashed. That gearbox. Man. I mean, I just can't take the key out. Because uh, I know some people that I can learn some stuff from to uh, refurbish the ignition key. And refurbish the entire steering column and all that. But that gearbox, that's got to go. That's really got to go. Got a lot to play in there. Uh, well, I guess now's the time to jack up the rear end and see what goes on. Because now I gotta crack that giant jack over here and uh, see what's going on. Yeah, so since it's a 318 thinking maybe like a 318 Magnum or maybe something new like out of a, like out of a modern pickup or maybe a Red Dodge Charger or something that can be that way and put it in this. I always research to uh, the Dodge Hopper. Yeah, I'm thinking about that. Because, uh, small block to put in this but uh, of course too this is just going to be a cruiser not a, a hot rod or anything. So both sides are lifted up. There's a wasp coming right there again. So I'm going to take you all off the camera stand and we're going to poke underneath to see how this looks. frame actually looks pretty darn straight. Yeah. Looks like my frame's actually not bent. 
I'm surprised. No that piles right here. So yeah, that's uh I think I lucked out. Let's get some of this brush out of the way. Set it up right there. I can. Yeah. So if the car jacked up how it is. Yeah. So I lucked out, the frame actually is straight. Put it on a pressure point back there to where it would uh put stress on the car and I didn't hear nothing snap or anything or any metal creasing and didn't scream lightly so yeah kind of show underneath here <laughs> cat must be getting in trouble but yeah look at that it's straight as a button I can actually tell from right here. I'm shocked by that. Put it in over right here. Well, at least it didn't take the front end. I know. Because I was looking online, these front ends for these Roadrunners are actually kind of hard to find. I am absolutely amazed at this framework is all okay and of course I have it up on a stress spot right there so it's in the back it's lifting both sides up the car didn't quite buckle because if there's structural damage on some of these unibody cars you'd actually hear a noise come right here in the middle and it actually begin to give way a little now true some of them may not be you know may not show that but but with these kind of cars that's how I actually find out of how the human body frames actually are so this is a structurally sound car of course, too, I'll go through each and every bracket, even though it was flipped and everything, see if it's if those are okay. But yeah. So there you have it, everybody. The car, the unibody, is actually nice. <sighs> oh, yeah. So I'm still trying to bait either 318 Magnum or, or a modern Hemi in this. Because I'm going to have to redo a lot of things about it anyway. I'm going to just have to find out how uh, those uh, brake boosters fit on here. Because I know there's not much room here in the front for one. Unless they have you know, specific ones made for it. Because I... Uh, because from what I know is that none of these quite came out with uh, disc boosters. And how I want to put disc brakes on this, if I ever put a decent sized engine on it, this, I may have to do some customization over there. I, I don't know yet. What do you think? You do your research, see what you get. I know they make a wide variety of sizes. I agree with you. I'm surprised that the front end's still on this. All these bars underneath. Yeah. Still 
Yeah, and they and they're not bent. I'm just, yeah, it does uh, the Roadrunner front ends on these are hard to find. Honestly. Oh. Oh yeah. Well, we see them splitting too, and guys that know more than I've us. Seen, to... I've seen Buck take a car. I can't remember what year it was. Back in the thirties. Took two of them, cut them in two, made one car. Oh, yeah, split and put them together. And yeah, this one though. I'll have to get measurements on how that roof is because uh, I don't know if he, that sun glare is going to be terrible or not. But as you can all see, it's not so great. I wonder if I could set the camera up on the trailer without it falling over. I'll have to adjust some things here. That's a decent view. That's decent enough. Guys, uh, well, it'll have to be done. Just like I said earlier, to uh, explain how this process goes, is for one thing, you have to build a type of bar system in between here because you never want to use the floor on your cars to pop up your roofs like this because then you'll actually do more damage on your floor than what you are doing on the roof because this is thick metal. So I'll have to find dimensions on how these roofs are. Uh, I'll have to jack this, well you know, jack it up, pop it to where I can actually get to normal dimensions, find a windshield, measure those or at least find the width and the length of how they are, then get the proper dimensions up here. Make sure the dimensions are the same thing in the back of the, of the rear view window. And then uh, measure posts and see where I have to cut on this side. And I think I may have to cut on that side. I'm not quite sure. Notice this earlier because uh, this side right here can actually be popped up. This this side can be bent forward. Here I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. All this stuff right here ain't really quite nothing. There's of course there's a crease right here. All that other stuff right there is pretty decent. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to react when it gets popped up. But I know for a fact this spot right here else has to be replaced because it's all creased in. Plus two with that lead filling. I'll have to find out what kind of lead that they used on this sort of grade of metal. And whenever I get their donor. Because this post right here, I can actually get this tape off. See what it's like. That black gorilla tape. kind of curious, this spot right here can actually be straightened up, but I don't know how bad this spot right here is. This this lip right here for the rain, it's about, that, that's easy to fix, but. So now I'm seeing a lot of options on how to fix this instead of just the, the roof. So this 
post, so it had to be replaced. So, hmm. The window, the back window really does look okay. So I may have to, of course, bring this out right here, because this is obviously pressed in. So, I'll have to find the factory welds over on that side, take them off, uh, skin the top here, fix whatever I can, replace the post over here, see if I can't find factory welds down there if there is such a thing, put in that new panel right there, and then the... There's not Oh, I know. I'm just not sure how... Sam, the last are good, find out where they're at. Yeah. So, yeah. This is actually easier than what... I thought it was. I know it was easy before, but now this is actually an extremely easy job. Yep. This is probably a week's worth of stuff right here. Maybe two weeks if I work on it constantly. Yeah, constantly. Yeah. Put on some 12-hour days. So, yeah. So there you have it, everybody. This is actually extremely easy to fix. You better watch out for that loop stuff on the tape. So, uh, I don't know if I could find like a wrecked, another wrecked Roadrunner or a decently uh, uh, fit uh, satellite to repair this for a donor car. Yeah, satellites are common. Well, So, the debate is on about either a 318 Magnum or modernize this with a modern Hemi in it. So, a Hemi Magnum. I know I have to do some customization in order for it to fit, but still, I'm still a fan of 318s. That's the thing. the video right there. So oh, they forgot to take out the original radio. Yeah I know I still have the original radio in there. I'm gonna have to take that out sometime and have it redone. I think uh chargers uh uh housing and such right there are fitted for this I think. I'm not too sure. Not too sure. I know a 73 will they're almost similar bodies. Well, kind of similar. I can tell quite. you more about Ford's than cars. Yeah. Yeah, this is our... Yeah, this is actually our first Plymouth, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I have to learn a lot of stuff about this. So yeah, I'm going to end the video there. Uh, this will definitely be a project car for next year, along with quite a few others. So... If you like this video, give a thumbs up, but if you hate this video, give a thumbs down. I don't care. You're my viewer. You're my critic. Rate, rate us however you want. And if you want to watch out for more videos of us in the future, and especially, hopefully, once we get a shop going for live streaming this stuff, then click subscribe and click that bell notification button because YouTube's algorithm demands you click that bell notification or else you won't see nothing from us. And don't be afraid to leave a comment. Yeah. If anybody's, you know, any extra advice or ideas that you had some uh, people leave a comment and delete it. Uh, I do read all comments and reply to ones I can't, even though we're still small, but I do like to reply to everybody. Unless if you're a bot. So, I will show on how to do this next year. Because I'll be doing all the research, because i got to find dimensions and such for these kind of roofs, especially since this is a very, very thick post in the back for the for the sports coupe. I've never done a thick uh, wall back here before, but it shouldn't be too difficult like all the others. It's just more metal. So, we shall catch you all another time. So, y'all have a good one now.